Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing good. It's time for another episode of Wrapped Up Retro where I have wrapped up the 50 oldest books on my TBR and we unwrap one in a vlog like this and read one. We only have two episodes left until we then do the finale episode, which is the 10th episode. I always do 10 episodes of each iteration of Wrapped Up. We only have two more normal episodes until we have to do the big number 10 episode, which if you were around last year, you'll be doing the same theme as last year. I don't wanna spell it out, but I'm a bit scared with this bunch because I've been having iffy success with it so far. If you haven't seen the last episode of Wrapped Up Retro, it wasn't the best. <laughs> it wasn't the best. Did I read? Absolutely. Did I talk? Absolutely. So I'm a little bit nervous, um, but let's just unwrap one and read it. I'm hoping for better luck. I don't know, I just have to kind of make a decision. I'm liking this one and I'm liking this one. I always just have to like, or this one. One of these three. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just have to make a decision and run with it, otherwise I can like, I can hesitate for hours. I'm gonna go with this one, whatever this is. Am I? Does this feel good? <laughs> They're just paper max, they like feel the same. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with this one and we're gonna see what it is. I don't know what side of the book you're seeing. Is that the cover? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna complete State of Shock. I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my god, I don't, I don't I don't know if I wanted to unwrap this. <laughs> this is The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. This is the sequel to the fifth season, which I did really enjoy. I think I gave the fifth season like a four, 4.55. I did say 4.5, it was somewhere in there. Um, I really did enjoy it, but it's incredibly intimidating for me. This series is incredibly intimidating for me and I own the second and third. Like I bought them straight after finishing the book because I really enjoyed the fifth season, but I am just so intimidated. <laughs> This one's gonna be a tricky one because I am gonna have to talk around in circles because I really don't want to spoil the fifth season for you. So this one is, I'm very much not gonna tell you the plot probably of this. I'll tell you the plot of the fifth season probably, but not this one. It's gonna be a tricky one to vlog. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay. We're reading the biscuit. I'm so scared of this. I can't believe I'm about to read this. Oh, everyone deep breaths, please. <laughs> good about this okay we're reading the obelisk gate i'm very scared but like a time i had to make progress in the series at some point i couldn't put it off forever i'm gonna have to read a really good the fifth season recap as well to refresh my brain but um bloody hell i gotta read it i've gotta read it and hopefully i mean this is one i have a really good shot of loving i'm just scared of it so yes oh my god <laughs> Hello friends, how are we all doing? Good morning, it is so dark and rainy outside. It has just been so warm over the weekend and now it's like all sad again. <laughs> but I am about 120 pages into The Obelisk Skate by N.K. Jemison. Here's the thing, on Sunday, it's Wednesday morning, on Sunday, evening I was like okay I have not read the fifth season since January 2021. It's been 84 years. And it was like the third book I read in January <laughs> in 2021. So I obviously don't remember it that well. So I read the recap and I was like oh god yeah <laughs> didn't remember a ton of that. And then I started this and I read the first like two pages I was like what? in God's name is going on. Like, I, don't I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, because I know for a long time ago. Like, I could not, I could not follow it. The first, I would say, 30 pages of this, I was really, really struggling to follow. But then since then, it has gotten better. So the fifth season, what can I tell you? Dear God, the fifth season is one of those books that by the time you've finished it, you have such a different like worldview, like you have such a different opinion on what the book is and what the book is doing that I don't know what is a spoiler. So let me have a quick look at the synopsis for the fifth season. I gave it, I think like a 4.5 star. I really did enjoy the fifth season. So it seems like there is another season happening where <laughs> seasons are like basically the world 
ending and like sun going there's no you can't farm it's like basically like the end of the world but like it seems like there's been previous seasons before and we are following three perspectives throughout the book but I say from the synopsis especially the main perspective is Essen who arrives home kind of on the day that's all happening to find her son dead and her husband and daughter missing and she assumes that her husband has killed the son and so she goes off to try and track down her daughter. We're following other two other perspectives, a young girl and like a young woman as well um, throughout the book. But they're kind of, I say Essen we know is like our main character. Essen's chapters are written in the second person, like you did this, you did that. Um, whereas I don't believe the others are, I can't remember that well. So that's basically what you need to know. It's kind of like fantasy sci-fi, the world may be ending, Essen is hunting down her daughter. And yeah, I, I'm enjoying it a lot more now. I really struggled at the beginning. <laughs> I'm just reading it physically also. I don't have the audiobook because I like to continue series how I started them and I just read the fifth season physically. There is a lot of information and there's moments where like I I can't understand why characters are doing certain things or saying certain things and I can't tell whether that's because I haven't read the fifth season ages or because I'm not supposed to get it yet. Do you know what I mean? Like there's certain characters who have got maybe questionable motives who are, who are trying to do certain things. This is going to be such an interesting vlog because the fifth season like, is impossible to talk about and this is the sequel. So God knows what I'm going to say to you about these books. <laughs> I don't know how interesting this is going to be. But I'm so glad The Wrapped Up has finally made me read this book because obviously it's taken me three fucking years <laughs> to read this. Also, I remember saying when I read the fifth season, I need to read the rest in the series really quick. Like I need to read them this year, AKA 2021, because I'll forget what happened. Cut to three years later. Ah! <laughs> so I need to like read this one and then probably read The Stone Sky quickly. So I'm glad that Wrapped Up Retro, this is the kind of book that it should make me read. What was I saying? I can't remember. Yeah, there's certain things I'm not under, I don't know if I'm not understanding because I haven't read The Fizzing Ages or because you're not meant to understand it yet. But N.K. Jemison is obviously one of the cleverest people in this entire universe. Like it is so intelligent and it's, it, this book is communicated with such intelligence and such thought. It kind of does feel like we've just begun though. Like we definitely still feel at the beginning. I don't know where this book is gonna go. I'm a little bit scared this is gonna feel like a little bit of a middle book because so much happened in the fifth season. It's such like a action packed, like so many different storylines with those three perspectives we're following. This one is told a little bit differently. I don't wanna say how because of what happened in the fifth season. Like, like I said, it, it, the ending of that drastically changes the rest of the series, right? So um, this is being told in a little bit of a different way. So I'm nervous it won't have as much action to it because it kind of feels like nothing's happened and we've all just been like standing around talking a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and read some more. I'll let you know my thoughts when I'm a little bit more of the ways through. I am enjoying it, but I, I, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous that it could have a little bit of middle book syndrome preparing for loads of shit to go down in the final book. Hello friends. I am now about 250 pages into the obelisk gate. I caved guys. I caved, I got the audio book. <laughs> it's helped. It's actually increased my enjoyment quite a bit. I was just struggling through this without the audio book. And maybe we'll get into a little bit <laughs> why that is in a second. But um, yeah, I was finding it really hard, but I feel like the audio book has actually picked it up a lot and it's making some of there's like a lot of new like you know fantasy systemness like magic systemness in this book that's being introduced and I was like uh, I don't know. <laughs> does anyone understand what's happening like I was I was struggling and the way hearing it audibly described to me is helping very much I am an order audible audio 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 auditory auditory learner <laughs> Alone tells you how stupid you are. Back when I like studied, back when I did exams, I'd like have to read stuff out to myself. I read everything out loud to myself because just talking through stuff. Also, my personal life, I like to talk through stuff. I like I share with everyone my innermost thoughts. <laughs> I don't know. I think just hearing it said to me has helped a lot. I do feel like this past section has been a little bit info dumpy, if I'm honest with you. I do I do think it's been a little bit info dumpy. Like it's got a lot that it wants to share with us and it needs to let us know some certain things. <laughs> and I just feel like it's a little bit like, oh my God, it's a little bit too intense um, info dumpy wise, but I don't think it's bad. I am enjoying it a lot more. I do think, do you want to get into this? I, I do think um, now is perhaps not the best time for me to have read this. I'm struggling. 
a little bit the past couple weeks, mental health wise, personal life wise. And I just don't think this is what I need to be reading right now. Like I think I need to be reading fun stuff. Either that be that like fun, cute romances or like campy murder mysteries is kind of what I'm like craving. Whereas this, it just feels a little bit too serious. It just feels a little bit too serious. <laughs> you know what it never was? That serious. It was never that serious. So I, I just feel like it would be disingenuous for me to have this vlog and not share with you that like I'm struggling a little bit <laughs> mental health wise and I just don't feel like this is the right time perhaps to read something like this or this is just not what I need right now in the moment. I need fun stuff, happy stuff, joyful, I mean murder is fun but you know I mean this is too intense, this is very serious, very clever and I just don't know if it's a perfect time. However, now I've got the audiobook, I only got the audiobook in the last like 50 pages and it's already helping a lot so I'm excited to see how that impacts the rest of the book. I am still feeling a little bit though like it is uh, middle book syndrome. You know what I mean? Anyways, I did just have another parcel where I've met with some wishes. You guys are going absolutely crazy. <laughs> I'm so thankful. I've had quite a few from my Amazon wish list lately. And again, when I'm opening these on camera, it's not like me trying to like beg for more or show off. I just feel like it's what I owe to someone to have gotten this to me to share me unwrapping it, right? To open it. So let's see what it is. Ah, I'm so excited. <gasps> I'm not looking at what the book is. I'm seeing what the note is. <laughs> the book is next to me. It's from Trinity. Thank you so much, Trinity. It says, happy birthday. Trinity, did you mean to send this to someone else? <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm so appreciative. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Okay, we've got a new release. We've got The Women by Kristen Hanna. So this is the author of The Nightingale, which many people have loved. And this one is set, I believe, during the Vietnam War. Yes. So I believe this is kind of telling the story of women in the Vietnam War and telling their story. And I did really enjoy The Nightingale. So when I saw Kristen Hanna was coming out with another book, I was very, very excited. She has so many books. Look at that list of her books. What in God's name? Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. I've already, I've already read The Nightingale. <laughs> I know she's come out with a few since, but this one just intrigued me more than others. So thank you so much, Trinity. That is so kind of you. I'm really, really excited to get to this one. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, I am just gonna go sit down and listen to a book of this and try to finish it as briskly as I can because I've been reading it for quite a while and I feel like I just wanna get it done. I am very glad though that I have made progress in another series. And this is like the kind of series that you know, it's been around a while. <laughs> it's been around the block a few times. Okie dokie, I just finished The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin and I'm giving this a 3.5. I think this is very middle book syndrome and I clocked it from the beginning. <laughs> I clocked it from the beginning. I don't think it's bad by any means. I think N.K. Jemisin's an incredible writer, but it just feels like a lot of this book is just setting up what needs to be set up in order for the last book to happen. And like, I like where it's going, but I was bored <laughs> a lot of the time. I would like to defend myself, but sadly that's the truth. I also think it's very, very jarring going from, in the first book, there's so much action. We're going from place to place to place to place. This book is very stagnant. We are following, I would say two storylines in this one, but both of them are kind of in, one place the entire time and that just feels very jarring it feels like we don't make as much progress as we did in the first book because the first book were flying here there and everywhere it felt like in the first book there was so many settings that we were so many interesting settings that we were encountering and meeting and this one just felt a little bit stagnant so yeah if i'm honest i don't have a ton of thoughts on it i think i need to read the stone sky quickly and finish this series off. I'm actually looking at a lot of my older series now that I've been reading for a long time and I'm like, I need to just like, I need to just commit. I need to just commit and read, like maybe I should read only series for a month. No, that sounds like a nightmare. It's like having a job working 24 seven for two days on the trot. But I'm really glad that I've made progress on this because I think I could have gone 10 years <laughs> without making progress on this one. And after reading this, it doesn't feel so daunting. Yes, it's intense and I don't think it's what I needed in this moment. Like I said, you know, a 3.5 is not a bad rating. I still enjoyed it but I just think it doesn't have the magic that the first one has. That's such a short check-in. I literally have nothing else to say to you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Also, it's so difficult to talk about because 
anything I say about elements of it specifically that I liked is about characters or whatever is so spoilery <laughs> for the first one or just plot points. I just feel like I can't talk about anything in specifics. Like I'm trying to think of things that I want to say to you and I'm like, well, that's kind of a spoiler and that's kind of a spoiler and that's kind of a spoiler. I will say we follow, I don't think it's a spoiler really to say we follow Essen's daughter a little bit more in this one. And I really enjoyed seeing her story and her perspective and I think where she's gonna go in the final book is very, very interesting. But yeah, <laughs> I just feel a bit like, oh, it's over, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Not because it was bad, just because, you know, it wasn't right for me in this moment. Um, but yes, I'm gonna go now film myself unwrapping next month's wrapped up book. So I always tend to do that because I always have to take the thumbnail for these after filming this and I'm like, oh, set on the book so I might as well unwrap it. So I'm very excited to see what we pick next. We're getting close to the end of wrapped up retro, but I'm really proud of myself for having read so many of these books that have been on my TBR for the longest. I feel like it's making my TBR feel a lot more fresh. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of this series down below. If you've read the fifth season, did you enjoy it? If you read this one, do you agree with me that it's middle book syndrome? because I think it stinks of middle book syndrome. I think it really, really is just tackling what we finished the last book on and setting up the next book for me personally. So let me know if you felt some of that or if you loved this because I am in the minority. I mean, I liked it, but I didn't love it and most people seem to love it. So let me know what you thought of it down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.